Welcome back to Health Watch. I'm your host Karen Chariot and today we are with Hilda. We have talked about the basics of mental health and depression. Right now we'll be talking about treatment. Before we talk about treatment, Hilda, mm -hmm. um, you did mention that it's hard for someone who hasn't gone through um, psychiatric training or counseling to help someone who has depression. But what if you are not in a financially, you're not financially able to take that person for help, professional help? What can you do? Okay, when it comes to depression, mm -hmm. someone who has not gone training uh, with the right guidance and help might be able to help with a loved one. But when it comes to a situation where medical attention is needed, then this person needs to be in a hospital. What am I talking about? I'm saying situations where this person is experiencing suicidal thoughts, mm -hmm. are self-harm, or is having an episode, then this person needs to be in a hospital. However, in Kenya, it's not that much practiced because of the stigma that comes with it, where we are afraid to talk about suicide. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when helping someone with depression and you haven't gone through that training, first of all, it is very important to be this person's support. By support, I mean encourage this person, understand this person, listen to this person. Mm -hmm. These are some of the very few things that we can do, even without training, that can help someone with depression actually get better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we find that most of the time we tend to keep off these people, not because we, we don't want to help them, but because we don't know how to help them. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, moving on. Um, at what point do you tell that a situation has escalated up, up until they ha they're having suicidal thoughts? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like you had and what is the difference Sorry. between uh, suicide and depression in terms of their symptoms? Okay. Mm -hmm. Like you had earlier asked the, the signs and the symptoms, yes. they're different. Most mm -hmm. of them, some of them are similar, but we have those ones that differentiate the, sure. the suicide and the and depression. depression. So when it comes to suicide, when you hear someone talking about being a burden, that is a sign that this person is having suicidal ideation. Mm -hmm. When you hear this person arranging, saying they have arranged their things together, their, in terms of their finances, their life, mm -hmm. everything that's put them together, not because they are planning their lives, but because they're planning to end their lives. This becomes also another uh, sign that you must look out for. When this person begins to isolate completely, does not want to be around people, then you need to look out for some of these things. Mm -hmm. Mostly when it comes to suicide, they talk about it. It's only that we, sometimes we do not hear them. Mm -hmm. When someone you says- hear them when it's too late. Exactly, when someone says, I'm tired of life. It's a word, it a joke. Yeah, it's a word that is being thrown out there so mm -hmm. much these days. I'm just tired of life. Yeah. And these are the things we tend to ignore. But we need to look into it. Why would you say you're tired of life? Why mm -hmm. would you say you just want to disappear? So these are some of the things that differentiate between the depression signs and the suicide signs. Mm -hmm. Depression signs could be isolating. Yeah. Hygiene, you don't want to shower, you don't want mm -hmm. to talk about anything, you don't want to exercise. Your sleeping pattern has changed. Either you sleep too much mm -hmm. or you're not sleeping at all. Either you're eating too much or you're, you're not, not eating, eating at all. These are some of the signs of depression. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, when a patient comes to you with suicidal thoughts or depression, how do you help them? What's the treatment like? First of all, there's something called a suicide assessment test, risk assessment test, where mm -hmm. I need to know the intent what are the intentions? Mm -hmm. How far have you gone with the plans? If there are any, when do you plan to do this? Mm -hmm. Where do you plan to do this? So once I've been able to identify do they that. Know when and where? Sometimes, yes. Okay. When, when they've reached that point, it's unfortunate that they've planned everything. Mm -hmm. They know even the exact time that they want to take their lives. Mm -hmm. So once I have been able to identify all this, then I, I get to know, does this person require psychiatric help? and being in a hospital, or is it something that I might be able to, to slowly help? Mm -hmm. So with this, there's, I wouldn't want to go into the therapies because they're quite a number, okay. but it's mostly helping this client, not giving advice, but trying to help this client see that there's more to life. There's things that they can do to overcome, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, I believe one of the help you give these people is uh, through support groups. Yes. What, what do you mean by separate groups? How are they formed? What are their bases in terms of principles? 
what exactly goes on in a support group? <laughs> Right. Okay. So when it comes to support groups, mm -hmm. first of all, we need to identify what is the purpose of this group, okay. because we just can't have every other person having a mental health challenge being in the same same group. Because it oh, so you also differentiate the patients who are going to participate. Yes. Okay. We also look at some of the challenges that they're all going through, because it would be very hard for me to put someone who's going through something that needs psychiatric help with someone who needs therapy. Mm -hmm. However, sometimes we tend to bring them together because some of these challenges, the, the, yeah, the ch under, under, underlying challenges are similar. But when it comes to now, when it comes to deal with, dealing with suicide, we, t we tend to look at the age, what you are going through, and how this support group will help you. So once this is identified, and the purpose and all that, we also have the things called rules. We just don't put anything out there because we might put something that triggers someone who is there. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the rules, very simple. Mm -hmm. And then the purpose of now the support group is creating a, some sort of community where you, you won't feel like you're alone. It becomes very hard for you to deal with a challenge when you are alone. But when you, you are with another group of people and they share their stories and all this, then you feel like you're part of something. Mm -hmm. So that is the purpose of support groups, just supporting each other through some of the challenges they're going through. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm just thinking, um, if we have a strong support group at home, not necessarily in hospital, mm -hmm. are we able to evade some of these things? Yes, uh, I tend to feel yes, when we have mm -hmm. a support group. First of all, the support group needs to start from the family. Mm -hmm. So when we have this at home, we might be able to, like you've said, evade some of these things. Mm -hmm. Through the kawaida things that we do, how am I going to support you? Is it that you want finances? Is it that you want a listening ear? Is it that you want some of those things, a job? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's being close to each other yes. and helping each other out. Yes. And um, as a society, where are we heading right now? What more can we do when it comes to mental health? And are there any, um, is there any number, free toll number maybe, that one can call in order to get help if they need help? Mm -hmm. All right, the first question as a society, like I've said, we've grown. Where are we now? You can see people are actually getting comfortable with talking about mental health. However, there, there's a lot that needs to be done mm -hmm. in terms of awareness, in terms of some of the treatments, in terms of finances, especially when it comes to funding mm -hmm. some of these things that we need to be yes. able to work through mental health. So there's a lot that needs to be done, but as of now, we get we are in a better place. Um, for the f number, yes, as we friend as Kenya, we have a number where you can mm -hmm. call. You mm -hmm. can call in mm -hmm. when you need help. Then you'll be able to be connected to one of the counselors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you have the number? Yes, I do. Okay. Yes, the <laughs> number is zero seven two two one seven eight one seven seven. Zero seven two two one seven eight one seven seven. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. And um, talking of finances, are there insurance companies that cater for the mental health? Um, How is the situation when it comes to, you know, insuring mental health? I'm not so sure about that mm -hmm. as of now, though I do know a few independent uh, insurance companies actually. Mm -hmm. with that. But when it comes to funding it as a whole, we're still depending on the government okay. and outside help mm -hmm. as of now, mm -hmm. the much I know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it hasn't fully been addressed in other words? Not yet. Okay. Yes. Well, thank you so much. How depression is expressed can vary from one person to the next. It is therefore important to keenly observe changes our loved ones are going through, especially during this time and help them where we can or direct them to institutions where they can get professional help. Remember, people don't choose to be depressed. Thank you so much. I have been your host, Karen Chiriot, and until next time, have a lovely evening. Mm -hmm.